Hey, have you been feeling disconnected from the supernatural? The thing that works for me is to run through a list of supernatural creatures. I'd like to start with one of my favorites, if that's okay. They're traditionally found in Chinese mythology as a huli jing and are capable of shape-shifting into humans, which can be a good or bad omen on the story. In one story, the nine-tailed fox arrives during times of peace, but it makes a sound like a baby and eats men. Good or bad omen, oh that's really tough to say. <laughs> the process from fox to human is simple. In one day, all a fox has to do is worship the Big Dipper and wear a skull on their head. Not every skull fits, so the foxes must try on multiple skulls to find the one that fits snug. Was there some specialty skull store strictly for this purpose? Where were these foxes sourcing all these skulls? They leave that part. So, we can only speculate. Fox spirits were thought to disguise themselves as young women, so they could seduce highly intelligent males for their semen. They believed this was the best way to absorb the life essence that could transition them into humans. And from a human to a fox god. The term foxy lady really takes on a new meaning now, doesn't it? After 1,000 years of service as a fox god, they can level up to a nine-tailed fox god that navigates higher celestial realms. There, they serve in the palace of the sun and the moon, and they transcend yin. Kinda sounds like a solid career track to me. Now in Japan, fox spirits are known as kitsu and are a type of yukai or a class of supernatural creatures with godlike powers. Some kitsu bewitch and trick humans. Others are faithful guardians, friends, and lovers. In Japan, it is also believed that kitsune grow multiple tails as they grow wiser and more powerful until they have nine tails. There are legends that kitsune are used as familiars or familiar spirits, a concept that is more native to European folklore. A familiar is typically an animal companion slash interdimensional being that spiritually guards witches while they practice magic and divination. Familiars manifest as common animals like cats, rats, dogs, ferrets, birds, toads, butterflies, sheep, or horses. You can meet your familiar in one of three one, it spontaneously appears as you go about your daily activities. Two, it's given to you by a friend or family member. Three, you conjure it and then make a pact with it. If a different entity or method is preferred by you, you can try a sprulpa. A sprulpa is the Tibetan Buddhist concept that a spiritual practice or intense concentration can materialize a being. In Buddhism, a sprulpa is when the Buddha manifests in an earthly body to teach lessons to those who have not yet attained nirvana. Western thought 
reshaped this idea into a tulpa, or a willed imaginary friend who is sentient and relatively independent. Modern practitioners refer to themselves as tulpamancers and have experienced hallucinations where they can see, hear, and touch their tulpa. Maybe an imaginary friend isn't for you, but an imaginary maid. Now we're talking. A bruni, or grugach in Scottish Gaelic, is a household spirit that comes out at night after the owners are asleep to perform chores. The owners must leave an offering of some sort, usually a bowl of cream or small as brunies are easily offended and will leave a house forever if they feel insulted or used. Brunies are male and usually ugly, covered in hair and naked or dressed in rags. If a household member hands a bruni a piece of it leaves the house forever. A bruni likely inspired Dobby the house elf in Harry Potter. The Baku devours nightmares. It's a dream eater. The Baku were made from the unused parts of the gods after they created all the other animals. This explains their elephant head horns, and tiger claws. A person who wakes up from a bad dream can call out to a Baku three times. Baku-san, come eat my dream. This must be done sparingly because if the Baku remains hungry after eating a nightmare, it can munch up your hopes and desires, leading to a very Have you ever gone hiking and hallucinated a face or a figure in a tree? You saw an imp. In European folklore, imps disguised themselves as or were bound to trees until their masters needed them. Their masters were believed to be witches or the devil itself. Imps are low on the supernatural and used as servants or spies. They are mischievous, wild, uncontrollable, and fond of pranks or misleading people. They are also lonely and in search of human attention, but are far too annoying to be friends with. Imps should not be confused with dryads in Greek mythology. Dryads are tree spirits are nymphs. They are typically associated with the oak trees they reside in and are found in the sacred groves of the gods. Dryads are shy and are born bonded to their tree, so that when the tree dies, the dryad also dies. Because of this, dryads and gods punish mortals who harm trees. Another forest creature, the fawn, is now known as a half-human, half-goat, but began in Roman mythology as ghosts of Faunus, the god of the forest. This idea then interwove with the Greek myths of satyrs, or half-horse, half-naked man. And by the time the Renaissance rolled around, fawns wound up as a two-footed creature legs, and tail of a goat, and the head, torso, and arms of a human being, plus pointed ears. They were symbols of peace and fertility, though Romans believed that fawns stirred fear in men, especially the men. 
men who were traveling in lonely, far away, or wild places. You see, fawns loved guiding men in need. Which sounds like a recipe for romance. The Wolpertinger inhabits the alpine forests of Bavaria and southern Germany. Wolpertingers have the body of a small animal, like a rabbit or a squirrel, with antlers, fangs, and feathered wings. Images of Wolpertingers have been found in woodcuts and engravings that date back to the 17th century, but there's debate over whether those are actually images of rabbits with a viral infection that causes bony tumors to grow on the head and the body. Selkies can shapeshift between seal and human form by removing or putting on their seal skin. Like most creatures, selkies are also they can be friendly and helpful to humans, or they can be dangerous and vengeful. Depicted as attractive and seductive, there are many tales of their romantic relationships with humans, which can result in babies. Often, a male steals the selkie's skin, so she can't turn back. Once she finds her skin, in typical folktales at least, even if she's given birth to several children, she will leave them for the sea, never to be seen again. Please note, the seals that qualify for shape-shifting must be larger in size than the grey seal. In Scotland, inhabit locks or lakes. Kelpies are beautiful gray, white, or black horse-like creatures that can adopt human forms, though some stories claim they retain their hooves. Kelpies prey on any human they encounter by taking them into the water and devouring them. Almost every sizable body of has a Kelpie story. A Grimm is a Norwegian water spirit who is an exceptionally talented fiddler. He's a handsome young man with webbed fingers and he plays sounds of the wind, forest, and water over his fiddle strings. A Grimm is said to be willing to teach his skills in secrecy on a Thursday evening in exchange for food. If the offering is adequate, the pupil will learn to play so well that the trees dance. If the offering is inadequate, the pupil faces madness and misfortune. The Thunderbird is a supernatural being of power and strength in North American indigenous history. It is said to create thunder by flapping its wings and lightning by flashing its eyes. The Thunderbird controls the upper world while the underworld is governed by the underwater panther or the great horned serpent. Thunder light in fighting and doing deeds of greatness. They are the enemies of the great horned snakes, who they have prevented from overrunning the earth and devouring humankind. In Hinduism, the Shesha is a serpent god and lord of all serpents as well as the primordial being of creation. Shesha is generally depicted 
as a thousand-headed serpent with a massive form that floats through space or upon an ocean of milk. His name means he who remains because even as the world is destroyed, Shesha remains. He is believed to have taken six incarnations on Earth. A cockatrice is a two-legged dragon or serpent-like creature with a rooster's head. It was featured prominently in English thought and myth for centuries. A cockatrice is created by a toad or snake's egg that is then hatched by a chicken. The cockatrice has the reputed ability to kill people by looking at them, touching them, or breathing on them. The weasel is the only animal that is immune to the glance of a cockatrice. But, 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 it is rumored dies instantly upon hearing a rooster's growl or by looking in the mirror. Prita is a hungry ghost found in Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, and Chinese folk religion. The Prita suffers more than humans do and specifically struggles with an extreme level of hunger or thirst. A Prita is the soul of a person who died, but is still trapped between death and karmic reincarnation. And all because their family did not engage in a year's worth of funeral rites. Their soul can remain suffering in this way for the rest of eternity. Pritas are believed to have been false, corrupted, compulsive, or deceitful during their time on Earth. They are often depicted as emaciated, human-like creatures with bulging stomachs and slender necks. A self is an elemental being that inhabits the air and is mortal but soulless. Selfs live within the ethereal dimensions, and are elusive. They are primarily beings of the wind, thought, and flight. Selves are depicted as winged, with human forms, similar to cherubs. They move quickly and suddenly and can travel great distances. They are able to impart spiritual powers and energies of air, to humans, like clear thought, imagination, and intellectual capacity, while also being able to diminish these skills so they can cause confusion and brain fog. Selves are the elementals for air, and thanks to the Swiss physician Paracelsus, there are elementals for fire, earth, and water, too. The elemental for fire is a salamander, or fire lizard. The salamander's skin and other extract were believed to give protection against fire. Salamanders were reputed to be so toxic that if they entwined themselves around a fruit tree, the fruit would become poisonous to all who ate it. Likewise, if they slipped into a well, the water would become lethal and undrinkable. Many species of salamanders do secrete a toxic substance when threatened, but its toxicity was greatly exaggerated by Paracelsus. The earth elemental was a gnome, 
are a small humanoid who often lived underground. Gnomes are reluctant to interact with humans and are able to move through solid earth as easily as humans move through air. They often guard mines, stone, and other precious underground treasures. However, there are several species of gnomes above ground, and they populate gardens, dunes, homes, and farms. Gnomes above ground typically inhabit three trees. The first tree is their main home. The second is their hidden entrance, and the third is their supply room. Most gnomes are seven times stronger than man, and can run at speeds of 35 miles an hour. Their eyesight is better than a hawk's. Gnomes are generally vegetarian. The water elemental is known as an un. Undines are found in forest pools, waterfalls, marshes, mountain lakes, and ocean waves. They are depicted as females, since water is a female element. Their beautiful singing voices are sometimes heard over the sound of the water. They are enchanting, but have a fierce temper when cross. Unlike humans, an undine is soulless. If you could be a supernatural being, what would you be? Which elements would you control? Would you be kind or cold to humans? Where would you 